Welcome back to When Bad Things Happen to Good People, a podcast about censorship and the arts. My name's Todd Sullivan. Joining me from over there is Oren Barter. And cooking to death over here. This is me. Today uh, we are talking about Captain Underpants. So you're warm in your uh, in your domicile there, eh? Yeah, it's uh, it's been. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've been in a bit of a heat wave. I don't I doubt. Have. I don't I doubt notice. in Kamloops, it probably hasn't been a big deal, but yeah, just like temperatures of forty five, forty six. We actually got that in Williams Lake too, which is super rare for here. I guess we broke like a eighty year old record or something. Yeah, I got into my car and it said. Before I started moving, it said 49 degrees, which it wasn't, because as soon as I started moving, it went down to 46, but still, it's hot. That's, it's insane. It's insane. And this is, we're one day uh, after the uh, apparently entire destruction of the community of Lytton. Um, just crazy, crazy, um crazy time i mean you know we're just and, and Lytton as well like it was mm -hmm. three or four days in a row of like the of breaking the hottest heat records in canada yeah and then uh as they're um like really really nail it home um the place just burned down so do, do you know if that was like man-made fire or if it was a natural fire no i believe it was it was a, a part of the it was a, connected to a blaze that was struck uh, started by lightning yeah yeah, because we I was outside um, last night and I could hear like no rain, nothing, just thunder all the way around us. We didn't. Mm -hmm. It must have been coming from like the hundred mile way because there's a lot of fires that started down in hundred mile area. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, reminded me a lot of 2017. Scary. Yeah, yeah. Um, thoughts obviously go out to um, those from Lytton and anywhere else that have been affected by the wildfires. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's rough out there. All right. Let's, uh, talk about underpants. On, uh, yeah. On a lighter note, Captain Underpants. <laughs> I guess before we get there, I, I mean, do you have anything, to, any beverages to keep you cool tonight, Oren? Um, yeah, you'd think so. But instead I'm drinking hot decaf coffee because I am nothing if not a sucker for punishment. I have uh, a nothing special because I'm not leaving the house in this heat <laughs> unless I have to. Uh, I've got a, a vodka and diet uh, um, diet Coke via SodaStream going on. And that's that's what I got happening here. Because right. I did leave the house a couple of days ago to go to Canadian Tire and get me a new uh, SodaStream canister. I just so, got a new SodaStream canister a couple of days ago, too. Yeah. We're both back in the bubbles. We're back in the bubbles. Well, I tried to make some bubbles. I made three soda streams and they were all completely flat when we went out for a, mm. for a picnic. So I have um I have two canisters so that I can I can be getting a refill while one is still right. working. It's working, yeah. Not that's smart. Um, even though I have four, I they're all empty except for the one that's in. <laughs> you have four canisters. I keep forgetting to bring the other one down when I get a new one. It's like, oh man, I need a new canister, and I go down to get a new canister, just, and then I forget to bring I, the other one. I just don't get a new canister if I don't have it with <laughs> me. I'm, I'm not. I can't throw around money like that willy nilly. Holy cow! So let's, yeah, let's let's do yeah. this. Let's do this, Captain Underpants. Captain, uh, is it Captain? Captain Underpants. Captain Underpants. Yeah. So Captain Underpants, if you can believe it or not, uh, it has been pretty consistently one of the most frequently banned books in uh like america and it is on the list of most frequently banned books from 2010 to 2019 it is number two wow that covers of course i, I think the entire series and not just a single volume and there have been uh, a yeah. lot uh, I've got an article that I'm looking at right now from 2013 that refers to it as a 10-part series and I assume um, there have been more titles since then. 
I went into this knowing nothing about Captain Underpants beyond the fact that it existed. Yeah. I had I'd seen the books, I'd seen the 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 the, the dude with the underpants <laughs> and the cape and and thought, okay, that's that's a thing that exists and, and seems odd. And that was literally all I knew. So uh, uh, everything I gleaned from this, the, the reading of this book informed my entirety of Captain there you Underpants. Go. And it's, it's not, it, it's maybe like, I don't think that I had a preconceived idea when I came in, but I guess I did because it's not what I thought it was. It's very different. Yeah. It's it actually, it's actually kind of genre bending. Yeah, and I, I I'll say that um, I enjoyed. I it. liked it too. Yeah. Uh, this is the sort of thing that I yeah I think I, I want to say that I think I would have liked it when I was younger. Um, I think it's a good. It, it is a to me a good kids title, uh, and it's very. Very cleverly written. Um, one of my favorite things. So it's basically the story. It's called The Adventures of Captain yeah. Underpants. But in a way, it's really the story of these two yeah. kids. George and Harold. These two kids, George and Harold. And Captain Underpants is their creation. They, they write and illustrate these comics where Captain Underpants uh, is the hero. Uh, he has a, uh, a catchphrase, tra-la-la. which is uh, tra-la-la. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, he's got these things like uh, he he fights with the power of truth, justice, and... Wedgies? Uh, no, it's like everything cotton oh. and... Oh, he fights and for, pre-shrunk. that's right, yeah. <laughs> fights yeah. for... Truth, justice, um, and everything, cottony, and yeah, pre-shrunk. And so, like, at the beginning of the book, you're introduced to the two kids, uh, George and, and you Harold. you find out that and, they're the, uh, quite the pranksters. And, they love to yes. pull pranks. And they they love to uh, put out this comic, too, and then there's, like, there's a sample comic in the book yeah, that you can read. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Which I love, too. I love the, the way it was misspelled. And uh, it, it, like it read very much uh, like a comic that these you know kids of that <laughs> age would create. But one of the things that I liked in the book is how quite often the the, yep. the chapter titles were like direct reactions to the end of the previous chapter. Yeah, there was quite a few examples of that. Like for example, like. There was one they they order this um <laughs> so like the, the teacher ring, catches yeah. them um planning this the, pulling off this huge prank against the school. It's like the big game uh and they've like they've pranked every single element of the big game. They put pepper they put, in the pom-poms for the cheerleaders so the cheerleaders were sneezing. And then when the marching band came out, somebody had put like a bubble bath in all their instruments. So they're blowing bubbles everywhere. Yeah, they filled the football um, with helium. So when they kicked it, it went <laughs> flying out in the air. Yeah. Uh, and then the, 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 like their, their muscle relaxant cream or whatever was replaced with the teams. Oh, um, was replaced with itching powder. That's so right. The whole football team was itching. It's like <laughs> the bathroom doors were glued shut. The, the, this, the, that, yeah. like they just friggin' nailed the school with the ultimate collection of pranks. Unfortunately, the principal who, uh, who hates kids. It's, it's, yeah, of course. Every principal needs to hate kids. Mr. Krupp, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, had set up surveillance cameras around the school and, and caught them doing all of these things. And so the next day he calls um, George and Harold into his office and says, you know, basically reveals the video and says, I caught you guys. I'm going to like, I could, I could show this to your parents yep. or I could um, give it to the school, the, the school threat? board, give it, and get, a, get give them the expelled. Yep. Yeah. You guys would be expelled. Um, or even worse, I could show it to the football team and they'd like kill you <laughs> every day for the rest of your life. 
And so he basically blackmails these two kids into uh, working for Being him. a slave, cleaning his car, re-roofing his, yeah. his house. What, what else did they get him to do? They, they clipped his fingernails. They right. shined his shoes. They were like, they had to be in class every day and not make jokes. Oh, they couldn't smile. Um, yeah. They, like, like he totally curtailed <laughs> everything that brought these kids joy. And, uh, and at some point they, um, they see this ad in a comic book for a hypno ring. And so they, um, they order it and it's like, you know, uh, I guess, you know, they're like, I wonder, I wonder if this will work. And the other right. one's like, I guess we'll find out in four to six weeks. And then the next chapter is called four to six weeks later. <laughs> and that's like just how they move ahead in time. And, uh, th- there's a lot of chapter headings that work like that, where they're like a direct response to whatever was going on in the previous chapter. And I, I found that from a, a writer's perspective, like really creative and from a reader's perspective, really, really fun. Yeah. Uh, I like books that do that, that sort of have those little in jokes and, and connections. Um, All right. Then there's, there's another one here. Oh no, I won't tell you that one, but yeah, there's, there's lots of, lots of uh, examples of that in the book. Mm-hmm. Just very, like you say, it's very fun. It's a fun. It makes it read really smoothly between the chapters. It really, there was no reason for chapters in this book. Like they were so short. The book was so short. It just was kind of used as like a comedic element. I think. That's what I was going to say. Um, is that there's no need for chapters, but the way that they exist and the job that they do in this book, I'm glad that they're there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're they're very good. They're very creative, and um, it it keeps chapter breaks are good for pacing a book. I think like in a in a longer, more adult novel, it gives you a place to sort of stop for the evening and put mm-hmm. your bookmark in. Uh, with like a little bit of closure at the end of a chapter. This, I think, almost does the opposite thing. Like hitting a new chapter is almost like it it re-energizes you to see, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Especially when you have those chapter headings that are like, oh, here's this fun joke. Um, you know, in the case of the, you know, four to six weeks later, yeah. oh my God, now they have the hypno ring. <laughs> yeah. What are they going to do with the hypno ring? And now you want to keep reading. Yeah. And so, why don't you tell us, Oren, what happens after they get the hypno ring? Well, they get the hypno ring, and then stuff happens, and then the book ends. No, um, so they get that the hip- seems that seems pretty accurate. <laughs> they get the hypno ring. Um, they decide they're they're feeling pretty cocky about it, so they show up to school late. They didn't show up at uh, Mr. Krupp's house to water his lawn or whatever the hell they were going to do that day. Uh, so yeah, they he, just they blew him off completely. Blew him off. They show up at school late. He's fuming mad. He's sitting there waiting for him. And uh, he's like, you guys are late. They're like, sorry, we were just trying to figure out this ring. And he's like, what? Let me see. He's like, yeah. You, and then he's he's moving and he's like, you got to move it back and forth. And, and, and you got to look right in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're starting to feel sleepy. <laughs> yeah. Which I thought was a really clever way to get him to look at it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that was. was, Yeah. I thought that was really clever. Um, And then, so they hypnotize him. So then they're having fun with it. They're like, okay, show us where the, where the tape is. Uh, So they, they get the tape back that he was hiding, which is what Mm -hmm. he was blackmailing them with. Um, They find all these things that uh, he had taken from him over the years and, and stuffed in the bottom of this, uh, this filing cabinet. They make him cluck like a chicken. um, Yeah. Every issue of their Captain Underpants comic as well. That's right. Almost makes it seem like he's a secret fan. Uh, yeah, you know what? I was going to make that that connection to later on because <laughs> of what happens. Like, Because what they end up doing is they tell him to act like Captain Underpants. So he takes off all his clothes except for his underpants. And including he, his wig. Including his toupee, yeah. So Captain Underpants in the comic is bald and kind of chubby and when mr krupp takes off all the stuff he grabs uh the the curtain from the window uses it as a cape and he looks exactly like captain underpants and like what are the odds that his underpants would be exactly those those tidy whities i don't know like he could have been a boxer brief guy he could have been a boxer guy he could have been a, a freaking commando guy for all we know that's right but maybe he liked captain underpants so much 
Because, like, it even says Captain Underpants is stronger than boxer briefs. That's true. Right? Um, yeah, so he, he dresses like Captain Underpants, and they're, they're laughing, they're having a good time, they think it's hilarious, and then all of a sudden they're like, where'd he go? <laughs> and then chapter 12 is, out the window. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and off he goes to, like, fight crime. Fight crime. What's the first crime? Uh, somebody robbing a bank, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the first crime he encounters is a bank robbery, and the the robbers come outside, and they've got like you know the 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 bags of money that you see in in comics and cartoons. And Captain <laughs> Underpants tries to stop them, and they're like, ha ha ha, whatever. But in his in their laughing, I guess they kind of they, they stop long enough for the cops to arrive and catch them. Yeah, and then the cops try to catch Captain Underpants too, because of course you know this this is a he's crazy just some man. weird guy in his underwear. He's a middle aged <laughs> bald guy wandering around in his underwear with a curtain on his back. Uh, but the kids can't let that happen, so they've got their skateboards. They they stole their skateboards back from the principal's a box full of things that they'd stolen from him, and so they they whoosh in on their skateboards and like grab Captain Underpants, and that way they go. But then Captain Underpants gets like snagged on a van or a truck that drives by right his cape gets snagged right and he gets pulled away well first these two these two robots steal a diamond from a rare jewel store they tried to dehypnotize him they were like okay this has to end we have to dehypnotize him that's when a big explosion happened the robots walked out of the jewelry store with a giant jewel um and they drove away in a van, they caught Captain Underpants, um, and the van says the bad guys on it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the future, bad guys, maybe don't do that. Yeah, you know, you don't you don't want to give away that you're, you know, the bad guys, because then people like Captain Underpants will be after you. Yeah. So... Um... So, yeah. So, so, I... so they, they go to their headquarters. Well, okay, so first they... They grab onto and they're both got their skateboards still. They're holding on to one mm. of each of uh, Mr. Krupp slash Captain Underpants' feet. They're being pulled <laughs> by this van. There's uh, a kid and, a, and an old lady sitting at a bus stop. And the kid goes, goes, Mommy! <laughs> uh, I'll just read verbatim what he says. I just saw two robots driving with a guy in his underwear hanging out the back or hanging off the back by a red cape pulling two boys on skateboards behind him with his feet. And his mom's like, how do you expect me to believe such a ridiculous story? But what is the mother reading? Oh, I didn't even check that out. Tabloid <laughs> Times. Bigfoot gives birth to 200 pound UFO, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a fun joke that like the mother's reading this, this tabloid that's full of like crap stories. Oh, but she won't believe what her son says he just saw. I didn't even catch that. That was, that's <laughs> brilliant. I also like the little the little quip uh, just before this happened. Um, let's see. So uh, Harold asks George, "Did I just see two robots get into a van?" And you know, said George, "Up until now, this story was almost believable." <laughs> <laughs> just a little fourth wall breaking in there. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they get, they get, uh, dragged to this warehouse, uh, where Captain Underpants is captured. Right. Well, um, and it's an old the... abandoned warehouse and it says right on the warehouse, old abandoned warehouse. Because everything in this world <laughs> is properly labeled as it should be, right? <sighs> um, and, uh, and yeah, we now have the evil Dr. Diaper. Which... Dr. Diaper. It seems like, like this feels like a character that needed to have a Captain Underpants nemesis, right? Yeah. Like, how do you have a Doctor Diaper without a Captain Underpants? It's it's just meant to be. Absolutely, and there's also I at the end of the book there was like a list of all the other characters in some of the other books, and right. there was uh, Professor Poopy Pants, which is I think one of the things that I talked to you about before. Um, Nick Kroll. Yeah, it was a character from one of the the movies or something. Yeah. Yeah. So like Nick Nick Kroll, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, he does a, a Hot Ones episode where he talks about being part of Captain Underpants, and he plays Professor Poopy Pants. It was funny to, 
And that uh, same thing, like the Doctor Diaper, Professor Poopy Pants, they just fall right into that. It's all very <laughs> underwear, <laughs> undergarment related. Yeah, these guys really need each other. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Captain Ab- Underpants gets captured and tied up. Um. Uh, Doctor Diaper is going to use this uh crystal to power his laser matic two thousand, <laughs> which will blow up the moon. Uh, causing huge chunks to destroy every major city on Earth. And um, so the kids are outside. They see all this going on. And so when when all the chips are down, when you you need a, a desperate recovery, you got to rely on the fake, fake doggy doo-doo. doo-doo. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Which they also pulled from the box of things that the principal had taken from them. And so they slingshot the doggy do nice foreshadowing the... earlier in the book too, by the way, they're like, right, should we take exactly. this with that's... us? And it's like, well, you never know when you're going to need some doggy fake right. doggy doo doo. That's Chekhov's <laughs> doggy doo doo right there. Um, and so they, they slingshot it in and lands right between his feet. Uh, that being Dr. Diaper. And in that moment, when he looks down, he thinks that like some shit has like fallen out of his diaper. And he's like, Oh my God, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. This almost never happens. This yeah. almost never happens. <laughs> and so now he's got to like go in and, and deal with his diaper situation. Change himself, yeah. Um, Which gives the kids an opportunity to get in there. And is this when they fight the robots? This is when they fight the robots, yeah. So this is the chapter 16, the extremely graphic violence chapter. <laughs> which Which has a warning at the front of it. Um, that the next few pages are like incredibly graphic and violent. Can I read, can I read the full warning? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. The following chapter contains graphic scenes showing two boys beating the tar out of a couple of robots. If you have high blood pressure or if you faint at the sight of motor oil, we strongly urge you to take better care of yourself and stop being such a baby. (laughs) And then, uh... Yeah, the flippy rama. to, To the creator's credit here, I love the way they did this sequence. Like, this is, he's got flip animation going on for these fight scenes, <laughs> right? So you got two pages and you just like, you flip this one page back and forth on top of that second page and create this little animation thing. And uh, of course I was reading an ebook, so I wasn't able to kind of get that to happen, but I could imagine what it was like. Well, and it does yeah, actually, is... it, it does actually say like, here's how it works. If your device uses forward and backwards buttons. So this, this was obviously like revamped for the ebook too. A little bit. Yeah. And I guess like, I guess my ebook settings are like, so when I hit the next page, it's not an instant thing. It's right. like I actually get to watch the page go. Shwoop. Yeah. I have to do that too. Yeah. Um, And so it, it, it swoops at a speed, which I couldn't make the animation work. Right. Um, but I could see how, again, with a, a faster or w- with a different setting on an ebook or, or in an actual, actual physical book. book. Yeah. 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 That um, was clever. I like that a lot. Yeah. Like right in the middle. It's like, hey, now we're adding animation to this book. Look at that. <laughs> it's interactive animation. Uh, and that's the whole fight scene with the different robots. Uh, and every it's it's every two pages. Right. So here's one page. Flip, 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 flip. Now we've got another two page section going on. Flip, 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 flip. Here's another two page section. Flip, 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 flip. Um, and they end up taking out the robots. Uh, and then what happens? Well, and then... So they take out the robots, they free Captain Underpants. And they're like, oh my god, what are we going to do? We have to take care of this laser... What is it? Lasermatic 2000? Right, or, right. Um, so they're like, what are we going to do? How are we going to destroy this thing? And they're like, what if we pull this self-destruct lever? <laughs> right. So they pull the self-destruct lever... Um, and bolts start flying around and they're like, we got to get out of here. It's going to blow. And then, uh, of course, Dr. Diaper shows up and he's got, what do they call it? Uh, his uh, diaper Matic 2000, 2000 ray gun. Everything's a something Matic 2000. <laughs> uh, so Captain Underpants flings a pair of underwear at him, just like he did in the comic book. He gets stuck on the Dr. Diaper's face, um, and then they were able to escape before everything exploded. And of course, uh, uh, George being forever the the realist was like, where did he get that extra pair of underwear? (laughs) (laughs) And then we see Captain Underpants with like a a barrel, a big wooden barrel with suspenders going like, what extra pair of underpants? (laughs) 
<laughs> Which again is like that's such a where did that originate? Like that's such an old timey idea of the guy with a barrel and suspenders to cover his yeah junk. Like like that is I remember seeing that in like Bugs Bunny like cartoons and stuff like that. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that's those are from like the forties and the fifties and yeah. shit, right? Like so like that's a classic idea. Yeah. I would kind of love to find out where that came from originally. Yeah. And then uh, now, now done that research. Dr. Diaper's just crying. So they won. They did. Um, and so they bring Dr. Diaper to uh, the police station. They leave him there with a note that says, arrest me. The police station, of course, <laughs> is like closed. Like for like, they've got a sign up saying like back in 15 minutes, please, please don't, don't commit. commit any crimes. <laughs> Which, I mean, what a what a trustworthy town these guys are living in. Yeah. Uh, and then they try to, like, uh, the, the kids go back to the school and they try to, like, uh, de-hypnotize their principal. Um, they end up, like, dumping water from... Well, uh, first they get uh, him to get dressed again and he's like, why? Because he's still Captain Underpants. They're like, because right, we're going right. undercover, so you have to put on these clothes and the wig, too. He puts it on and they're like, oh man, he almost looks like Mr. Krupp. And the other kid's like, it is Mr. Krupp. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. Oh, right. I forgot. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so they try to de hypnotize him. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. They can't find the manual anywhere. Right. Um, so they, yeah, they dump, they dump him with water, which brings him back. He's all mad. Uh, sorry, I cut you off there. No, it's I'll fine. You, yeah, he he comes finish. back. He's mad and he's like, I'm going to take this tape. To the, the <laughs> That's right. football team. And of course, the kids at this point, when he was hypnotized, they got them to give him the proper tape and they put in like the, the purple singing dinosaur tape that one of the character's sisters really liked. And so that's what he's bringing to the football team. <laughs> uh, as they leave the principal's office, one of them says like, oh, I did find the instructions, but I guess I'll throw them away because we'll never need these again. <laughs> And as he tosses them over his shoulder, yeah, like like he, we can actually read a, a warning on the instructions saying, like, whatever you do, do not pour water on the head of someone who has been hypnotized <laughs> with this ring. Otherwise, they will, like, come in and out of hypnosis every time they hear a snap of, of fingers. Yeah. Thus, I think, setting up the future the yeah. Captain Underpants series. Um, And I think we forgot to mention, too... Um, that this whole book is is a, it's kind of got a Dr. Seuss sort of aesthetic in terms of like the words taking up half the page and then drawings on the other half of the page, right? Like it's very, very graphic driven. Every single page has a cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think we really mentioned that. It's not really a comic book, but... Yeah, no, and it is. Like it is a chapter book in the sense that, you know, there are multiple chapters most of the chapters are like short as far as word count goes but yeah it's like um you know a half page like you said of of text i mean sometimes you've got like a smaller picture you've got like a mm -hmm. one quarter of the page picture and a three quarters of the page in text but um yeah all in all it's like not a lot of not a lot of words no but super 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 fun yeah um, the, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the football team ends up like really enjoying, uh, the, the video of the purple singing dinosaur, purple, they, purple they, dragon sing along friends. So they renamed the yeah, team. They, they changed the name of the team. Um, the, uh, George and Harold resume their comic book making and their prank playing. Uh, and they, uh, Mr. Krupp, the principal now still occasionally turns into, Captain Underpants. That's kind of the book. That's right? kind of the whole book. Tra la la. I think that's how it ends. Tra la la. <laughs> that was when fucking Mr. Krupp is like barreling out the window, running off, going, Tra la la. <laughs> that might have been my favorite moment. Like, what a bonkers, arbitrary, random catchphrase. <laughs> but that's what I love, too. Like, I could see, like, a like couple of like I don't know like seven or eight year old kids going like, "What's our hero's catchphrase going to be?" Ooh, I don't know. Uh, ooh. Ta -la -la. Ta -la -la. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know the fact that Mister Krupp knows the catchphrase, knows Captain Underpants' signature moves. You know, like yeah. he's clearly read all of these comic books. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. He's 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 a fan. Um so I know one of the 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 complaints that this book has received is that it, so for my my money there's not a whole lot in this first volume that's even close to being a bannable offense. Yeah. But if there's one thing in this volume that has been a criticism that I read about this series it's the um the lack of respect for authority. And and I see that there in 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 the kids' relationship with uh, Mr. Krupp, the principal. Um, yeah, I think. And not that that's a that's a bad thing. I think. Yeah, I mean, so like, menace he, the menace. Interestingly enough, th- there is this weird, um, uh, thing in certain stories where you have principals, yeah, at schools who hate kids and who hate students Mm -hmm. and it's a pretty common trope it is a common trope trope was the word i was looking for thank you um the thing is i don't know if it's actually that common in reality because I, i i find it hard to believe that someone who hates kids would spend that much time to take a career where they have to work with children all the time and i think it that trope comes out of the the feeling that kids have Mm-hmm. That you know, when when you're doing something that's fun and exciting to you, and then the authority figure has to be like, "No, this isn't okay. You need to sit down and pay attention in class. You can't stick a firecracker up your ass just because you think it's funny. Please don't do that." And that gets interpreted into this this guy is an asshole who hates kids. Yeah, and I think that's where that trope originates from. Oh, definitely. Like Bart Simpson with Principal Skinner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I'm not sure what my point was, but um, it was to point out that this sort of character is is very tropey, but also not realistic, I guess. But yeah. that's okay, because it's fun. Yeah. What we've got going on here, it's fun. Well, you were talking about why it might have been challenged, and one of the reasons was like the... Right, and it's the disrespect yeah, for authority. Disrespect for authority. And... Um, and again, in this case, you know, when you've got that authority figure, who's who's who is that person who's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm here only to uh, make your life miserable and and rain on your parade and make your comics suck and everything else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would want to disrespect that authority figure. Like, I get it. Like, I'm supposed to do well in school, but also like, you know, the the pepper on the things was kind of funny, right? You got to give me that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like, you know, gluing the bathroom door shut was a bit much. <laughs> you know, bathroom doors is fine. Exit doors, that'd be another man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this definitely had the the defiance of authority. But honestly, other than um, that, I didn't really see no anything in it that was, like, worth challenging or banning. So, yeah, I think most of the, the issues with... Um, Captain Underpants come from like a, a disrespect for authority, um, which I mean, well, this is I'm yeah. Not, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I think I think kids should probably learn early on not to disrespect authority, but to at least question it. Mm-hmm. I think you know most of us have come as adults to realize that authority isn't right simply because it's the authority and in a lot of Um, cases um you know because they're in authority they're in the wrong or they use it to do the wrong things yeah yeah and so yeah i think that's you know if 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 that's what this is teaching kids that's a positive message and not something that uh should be banned um, I, you know, I've got an article here that says that, um, you know, later issues of, of Captain Underpants address such things as ADHD, teasing, discrimination, feminism, um, and things like that, which are obviously not always topics that certain people are okay with, especially, you know, when it comes to what your kids are learning, I'm sure there'd be plenty of parents who, who would be like, oh, I don't want my kids learning <laughs> about feminism. About feminisms. But, you know, that's, 
that's maybe the time when it should be happening when, when, you know, so it's not, because the whole idea that women should be treated equally to men, mm-hmm. it, it strikes me as not a particularly weird concept. And, and, and so given that historically they've not been the idea of taking children and reminding them that, Hey, maybe we shouldn't do that. I don't think that's a terrible thing. Uh, I agree. I don't think there was anything in this book that was worth banning or challenging. No. And like I said, it's just an easy, I think it was an easy target, you know, with a name like captain underpants, right? Like somebody wants to direct Mm -hmm. their, you know, well, you had a, you had a quote there from, uh, from somebody, the chair of something or other. Uh, that's right. Uh, the um, Judith Judith Platt, uh, the 2014 committee chair for Band Book Week, describes um, the reasoning for Captain Underpants being on the band list. It's naughty and it's seditious and it certainly is irreverent and challenges authority. All the things that make um, it awesome. All the things that make it awesome. I mean, naughty is is so in the eye of the the beholder, and it's such a weird. Well, yeah, word. Like, yeah. I mean, you're you're part of like a committee that's supposed to like break things down subjectively and then come to a decision, and you're using a word like, but it's naughty. Like, what the fuck? Well, is no, that this even isn't mean? somebody who tried to have the book banned. Oh, okay. This is somebody who like is is um uh on, on the chair for Banned Book Week, which is the celebration of banned books, right? So she's coming up from a perspective of like why it's been banned, okay. but not necessarily why it's bad. Oh, okay. Um, but like naughty is such a, a weird word because I feel like someone could use it to describe like Fifty Shades of Grey, right? <laughs> Which is substantially different content from this. Um, naughty in this case just means like uh, we accidentally <laughs> hypnotized our principal <laughs> into becoming a weird uh closeless superhero um yeah i don't know uh for me if i would if i if i would go out of my way to read any more of these books just because it's not it's they're not meant for me no that's what i got my final thoughts are um it's fun you know it's irreverence is i think ultimately not disrespectful and uh and i think we should be teaching kids to Question authority, especially when you have a principal <laughs> who hates, hates kids. kids but loves Captain Underpants books. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I'd give it uh four fake dog duties out of five. Yeah, I'm with you. Same, same number, same, same measurement tool. Do- yeah, do- fake dog duties. Absolutely, doggy. four dog duties. Okay. Yep. But they have to be squishy. They have to, was that one squishy? I don't know. I'm just saying for me, it's got to be squishy. Mine mine can be hard or squishy. I'm, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to draw the line at, at... Okay. All right. That's bold. Cool. That's a bold <laughs> take. Um, all right. That's all I got. Uh, I guess we're, we're done. Uh, I should let you get into a cooler space. Yes, please. Thank you. Um... <laughs> Thanks for listening, folks. Um, as always, you can uh, you can find details about other shows that we're on or uh, how to support us over at blah 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 media.com. That's B L A H B L A H B L A H media. Uh, shout out to uh, another podcast on a different network called Mysteries and Madness. I haven't uh, name dropped that one in a few weeks, so let's bring that one up. Um, it's a it's a it's a role playing game podcast where we uh, we tell a story as we play a game and Dave edits it together into kind of a radio drama and it's uh, it's a whole wild kind of thing. It's, it's awesome. Uh, and you can find that at Coal Mines Clubhouse on your podcast apps. It's called Mysteries and the Madness. Um, I guess that's it. Until next time, my name's Todd Sullivan. And I'm Oren Barter. Thanks for listening, and uh, now go read a fucking book.